Here is an easy way to draw the graph of square root functions. They'll look like this, and what makes them square root functions is that there's a square root sign in them. Pretty straightforward. We're going to graph each of these on the same grid with the same process. Plot the vertex, and then we're going to use a step pattern. This is the same way you plot parabolas and there's only a minor, minor variation between square root functions and parabolas. Here is a square root function. Square root of x plus 7 plus 2. This kind of looks like a parabola if it was written like this, with a square instead of a square root. The vertex of this would have been at negative 7 and 2. And that's going to be the vertex of our square root function as well. Then we're going to use our step pattern. And the deal with the step pattern is that it's 1, 3, 5, 7, just like it is for a parabola. But for a parabola, it's over 1, up 1, over 1, up 3, over 1, up 5 and it gets taller and taller as you move to the left or right. With a square root function, it's up 1, right 1, up 1, right 3, up 1, right 5, up 1, right 7. Be careful. You're going to get flatter and flatter as you move to the right. So, let's do this. Plot the vertex of that first one. The vertex was at negative 7 and 2. So let's plot that vertex at negative 7 and 2. Now the step pattern is up 1, right 1, up 1, right 3, up 1, right 5. So let's do that. Up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, 2, 3 from that new point, up 1, right 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 from that new point. Up 1 over 1, up 1 over 3, up 1 over 5, up 1 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I don't have room for 7, so that's good enough. Now, that's it. Draw a curve through those points. Start at your vertex, draw it through the points, and just put an arrow at the one end. That is a square root function. That's what the square root function is supposed to look like. What I would like to do with you is to graph a little bit more of a complicated one. This just looks plain ugly. And what you'll notice is that we still have a vertex. I'm going to do this in a different color. The vertex is still what's added or subtracted from x, with the sign flipped, and then what's added or subtracted from the end. The vertex here is at positive 7, positive 4, positive 7, positive 4. Flip the sign here, keep that sign the same. We can plot that vertex straight off. 7 and positive 4. It's all the way up here. Now, we have a step pattern. Up 1, right 1, up 1, right 3, up 1, right 5. But we have to adjust it because we're stretched by 2 vertically, flipped vertically, stretched by 2 horizontally, and flipped horizontally. So, flipped vertically and stretched by 2 vertically. Instead of going up 1 each time, we're going to be going down 2. See how the minus 2 means down 2 each time? And instead of right 1, we're be going to be going left 2. Left because we flipped ourselves vertically or horizontally. There's a negative out front here. And we're going 2 instead of 1 because we are stretched horizontally by a factor of 2. Be careful. This half means stretch by 2 horizontally. That's one of the tricks in transformations. One half on the inside of the function actually means stretch. Just like if it was negative 2 here, you'd be compressing it horizontally. Anyways, 
up one becomes down two, just like it did in the previous step. Right three becomes left six, because you flipped the direction and stretched it by two. Go down another two and go left by 10. Switch the direction and stretch by two. We've got our new step pattern, how about that? So, whip this out again and follow your new step pattern. We gotta go down two, left two. Down two, left two. Down two, left six. Down one, two, left one, two, three, four, five, six. Down two, left ten. Probably not gonna have room for that. And draw a curve through those points. Put an arrow at the uh, trailing end there. Nothing at your vertex. And you're done. Cool. Plot your vertex and use your step pattern, but make sure it's stretched and flipped appropriately. Best of luck.